Okay, hello everyone, today we're here in Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 in Just Flight's Piper Warrior 2. We have a 69 nautical mile flight from Lima Oscar Mike Wings Field to Mike Delta Tango Harrisburg International. Harrisburg is a freeware airport I got from flightsim.to and it looks fantastic. I'll include the link in the details so that you too can have it. We'll be flying VFR, but we'll also try a practice VOR approach to Harrisburg. Should be a fun flight, so let's hop into the pilot seat and get started. Alright, as we get everything started up here in the Warrior, I'll take you through the flight brief. We are departing from Wings Field, which is an untowered field nestled beneath the Philadelphia Bravo. We're flying to Harrisburg, which is a Class Delta, and we're planning on doing a practice VOR approach, as if we were flying IFR using the Lancaster VOR. So those are our waypoints. We're going to fly the 281 radial to the Lancaster VOR, and then the approach itself has us flying the 290 radial from Lancaster to Harrisburg. Just south of Wings Field is the next shelf of the Philly Bravo that starts at 2,000 feet. Also just south of Wings Field is Interstate 275, which is underneath that shelf, and southwest is the Schuylkill River. So we'll use those as visual way points to uh, get us uh, out from underneath that shelf because we're going to be climbing and we don't want to accidentally bust the Bravo by climbing into it. The plan is to intercept the 281 radial to Lancaster and follow it. That'll take us right over Lancaster and then from there we're going to fly the VOR approach. Because this is a VOR approach we'll only be using our CDI and DME for this. Our initial approach fix is Lancaster VOR, which is LRP. We need to arrive at that at 2,000 feet. From it, we'll fly the 290 radial from Lancaster at 2,000 feet to 10.3 DME from Lancaster VOR. That's court intersection. We'll continue at 2,000 feet along the 290 radial to Bromel intersection at 16.3 DME. And then we'll begin our descent. So we need to maintain a three degree descent. Uh, the way we're going to achieve that is by uh, multiplying our ground speed by five to give us a foot per minute descent rate, uh, which I'm expecting to be around 450 feet per minute. That'll keep us on the three degree glide slope. And we will descend until we get to our minimum descent altitude. Our approach speed puts us in category A. You can see the numbers 1160 slash 55 there. 1160 is the altitude and 55 is the runway visual range, so that stands for 5,500 feet, which is the lateral distance that we can expect to be able to see the runway and center line and any lighting on the runway. If we don't have the runway in sight by the time we hit Zilwi, which is DME of 20.6 at a distance of 0.9 from the field, then we go mist and we follow the missed approach procedure that's in the boxes right above Zilli. So you see a 1500, a 3000 with a curve, RAV, and barn. Uh, so the missed procedure is we continue straight uh, along our 290 heading, uh, climbing up to 1500 feet. Once we hit 1500 feet, then we do a climbing right turn to 3000 feet, flying heading 09 or 0, intercept the RAV VOR radial of 193 and follow it to Barn. To figure out where Barn is, since we don't have a GPS, we have to look at the top of the plate and you can see Barn is at 18 DME from LRP along the 314 radial. Uh, and there we fly in the hold pattern as instructed by ATC and presumably get vectored back to Lancaster VOR to try it all over again. Alright, got all that? Think about what the workload's going to look like for the pilot if you go missed in this aircraft. We've been flying, at this point, the Lancaster VOR along the 290 radial. Before we get to this point, we're going to have to set up CDI 2 to the RAV nav frequency and dial in 090, uh, because when we go missed, we have to intercept that radial pretty quickly. And when we go missed and we're intercepting that radial, then we're going to have to toggle back to CDI 1, which is Lancaster VOR, and adjust it to 314 radial, uh, because that's how we're going to know that we got to Barn. We're going to be looking for a DME location of 18 from Lancaster along the 314 radial. So you got to have all that ready to go. Uh, you're going to be scrambling uh, when you go missed. I will say when I started uh, flying an X-plane, uh, 
CDIs, VORs, DMEs were all a complete mystery to me. I had no idea how these two gauges here work that you see me turning. Uh, but now they're, they're pretty straightforward. I think they're easy once you get the hang of it. And I actually, I really like using them for VFR flying. Um, I especially like them in aircraft like this where you don't have a Garmin 530. It just shows you a magenta line where you can actually do things like dial in VOR frequencies, intercept radials, and uh, fly old school. It's a lot of fun, especially if you like hand flying like I do. Wingsfield traffic, Piper 359 of Elf Charlie, taxi runway 24, Wingsfield. They've got a nice spot over here on the right to pull over for a run-up, so we will do a quick ground check. One of the things I miss from X-Plane is the reality expansion packs uh, that really require you to do a run-up for things that might break on your airplane <laughs> in flight, which has happened to me. So I hope somebody comes out with something like that for Microsoft Flight Simulator. Wingsfield traffic, Piper 359 Gulf Charlie, departing runway 24 for west departure at 4500, Wingsfield. Clear left and right, clear straight ahead. We have got live ATC streaming with Philly Approach on COM2. We are underneath the Philly Bravo in here, so it's probably a good idea to listen to them. Once we get out from underneath the Philly Bravo, then I'll put COM2 on 121.5, which is guard. Although we're on CTAF now, later on we'll have to talk to both Lancaster and Harrisburg. You may have picked up on it when I brought up the sectionals, but the practice VOR approach we're doing using Lancaster's VOR requires us to be at that VOR at 2000. That is inside Lancaster's airspace, which goes up to 2900. So to do a practice approach to Harrisburg, we're going to have to call up Lancaster first and get permission to enter their airspace and uh, overfly essentially midfield, which is where their VOR is, at 2000. Normally I like to climb to pattern altitude plus 500 before making any turns when you're flying out of an untowered field, uh, because that's what the aim says to do. Although in real life I think a lot of pilots uh, fly the pattern and exit at any leg of the pattern. We are doing an early turn out here because you can see there's 275 right there, so we're already past it, which puts us underneath the 2,000 foot shelf of the Philly Bravo. I'm at 1,100 now, so my goal is to get back north of this uh, interstate um, and put me back in the, uh, the higher shelf of the Bravo that we started out in. If you look at CDI 1 in the top right hand corner there, you'll see that it is not picking up anything, so we are either not high enough or we are too far away from Lancaster to pick up their VOR signal. Uh, so therefore, we're just going to fly our 281 heading, which will be parallel to the radial we want to intercept until we pick it up. All right, we're on track. Let's sit back and enjoy that awesome flight simulator scenery.
Alright, that was a lot of fun and it was really cool to do a practice VOR approach and we had some great scenery with the setting sun just over the river as we came into Harrisburg. So if you enjoy content like this, be sure to click that like button, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks, as always, for flying along with me and stay tuned for further flight adventures.